Hey everybody, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the new radiation grenade. The first half of this video will be about their stats, while the second half will be an analysis of it. And then at the end of the video, I intend on covering the exact maths on how these things exactly work. To summarize my analysis, I will first explain why they are not broken, as many other partners have con Then I will end my analysis with talking about prevalence and really how that is working as a balancing factor. So let's just get right into this. First, let's start off by covering the basic stats of the new grenade. To begin with, the new grenade is factually one of the strongest items in the game, being the only item whose usage is permanent on the area it affects, and the only item in the game which deals radiation damage. Its gauge is exposure, which works much like normal radiation in that the higher it is, the more damage it will do, with it capping out at around 4.2 damage per second at max exposure. The amount of damage it does is proportionate to how filled the gauge is, so at 50% filled it does 50% damage, meaning 2.1 damage per second. This allows an equation to be set up of damage per second equals percent exposure times 4.2 damage per second. This equation can be modified further if we know the rate at which exposure is added. However, exposure is decided by a lot of factors ranging from distance to center to if there are two nades to if there is natural rads on the field. To do this, I will not make a complete equation yet, but I'm going to do so later in the video. But for now, we can make a makeshift equation using the rate of what it is at 10 meters from the center after the nade is fully spread out, and using this method we can find it will take 25 seconds to reach max exposure. This finds a rate of change of 4% exposure per second at 10 meters. Testing it again at the epicenter of the grenade, it will take 10 seconds to reach max exposure, finding a rate of change of 10% exposure per second at ground zero. However, there is also a 10% bonus that's gained to the rate of the initial blast. There are more complicated equations that can be found using this as well, however I will bring those back up at the end of the video. Moving on to other stats, the range of the grenade is 20 meters, with its damage varying based off the distance from center. However, should you exit the inflicted zone, you will continue to take damage as the gauge decreases, with it taking as long as it increased for it to decrease. Finally, the last bit of data to add here, the grenade will not wear out over time and will not give hit markers or kill credit for any kills or damage done. Iodine is a very solid counterbase, as iodine will stop the taking of further damage for 20 seconds, but not prevent the accumulation of exposure if you enter the zone. However, should you exit the zone and use iodine, it will completely remove all exposure within a very short amount of time, meaning iodine is a solid counter base. Alrighty now, to my covering of my analysis of these grenades. First off, I'd like to start with the statement and feelings I had about them before doing all of my tests, which mostly focus on the fact that they are not exactly a practical consumer. Then following that, I would like to discuss how the stats of the grenade also undermine the amount of credit we have to give it power war. My analysis of the grenades is this. They are quite powerful, however, they likely will not become a massive issue. I'm aware that several other partners have already released their own opinions about them, however, I'd like to completely disagree with them over their fears. And to summarize why, the extreme power of the radiation grenades is indiscriminate, and it's a double-edged sword. So, for as much damage as it does to the enemy, it's going to be doing to you. First, let's think about their usage. Commonly, they really should be being used as a flesh item, being thrown the smoke out an enemy. However, unlike other flesh items, such as flash nades and red grenades, they make it so you physically cannot push into the region that you just flushed. So while yes, the enemy now has to move out, you can't exactly move in to where they were. This means that the massive fear of many partners that these will be overused on loot POIs may be completely unfounded, as to use it on a loot POI would to prevent yourself and your opponents from getting its loot. But its double-edged nature isn't finished yet. Let's say you pin an enemy and try to finish them using this. Well first, you must stay 20 meters away from the center of the nade. 20 meters is the very furthest range you can throw these grenades. Meaning, regardless what you do, after using this grenade, you have to retreat a bit. A caveat that doesn't exist and doesn't really make sense on any other flush nade. And I think it's a bigger deal than most people think. As this means that several buildings, in order to use these grenades, you have to completely retreat out of the building yourself and into areas with far less cover. This is a caveat that gives the pin player a chance to push out and match you while you fall out of radius. But let's give you the benefit of the doubt. You've used it and you've killed the enemy. Well, what's next? Well, first of all, you have no way of knowing you killed the enemy, since the rad nade gives no damage ticks and no kill credit, meaning they could still well be alive in there grasping on with iodine or hugging to the edges of the radius to buy themselves time. Second, how the hell are you looting them? If you go in to try, then you'll be irradiated as well. 
So now you've spent an expensive consumer role to achieve practically nothing. Maybe you killed someone, but maybe you didn't. And even if after you've killed them, you won't get any kill credit, you won't get any XP, meaning for top tier players, this just sacrifices a potential kill for the KPE. So to me, it has been proven that it has no broken practical usage. But what about trolling? It's very clear that, that with these set of rules, it might be a very viable item for trolling. But many players have, you know, focused on this 20 meter radius is enough to cover an exit. Cool. You can't die from radiation while on an exit. This is a known fact that has been seen hundreds of times. It's just a known fact. So trolling players, when they throw the grenade at the exit, you just run through their rad cloud and yet exit. Also, if they use it to block off these exits, they also have to retreat from these exits, meaning these trolling players cannot camp the exits, which is far more viable and far more lucrative for them. But let's humor you guys. Let's say they are actually a shitload of very stupid trolls who would waste mats to block off these exits. And while it could force players into other exits, so what? We have exit anti-camps for a reason. These would kick in in any exit regardless what exit it is. So you've shifted which exit you're exiting. Okay, it doesn't really impact gameplay too much. To finalize really on this, you also have to consume the, the really the concept of what it means to be a camper. Campers are innately going to be on exits. Just because they're now using rad nades or they're using contact bombs or they're hiding slightly outside of an exit tower doesn't mean that you can be any less careful. All of this really does is add a slightly more visible form of knowing that an exit camper is nearby. If you're not aware of an exit camper, this won't make your life easier because your life isn't easy because you're not keeping tabs on what's going on in the encounter, and that's on you. But to finalize, I think the first week or two, we would see rampant usage. And I doubt its momentum would continue as it's too dangerous, it's non-practical, and it's going to discourage most players from using it. Except, we didn't see it in the first two weeks. And this falls under the belt of prevalence. A while ago, I made a video that explained everything in Vigor is balanced in a way, and one such way is prevalence. I intended on having another video about this topic in the future, but for the short term, here's what needs to be known. The rat need quite literally has no prevalence. It doesn't show up in loot POIs, it doesn't show up in crates, it's way too far down the battle pass to be used in large quantities by players fresh into the season, I meaning it's only really players there who have reached it through large amounts of grinding who would have realized my earlier statements that these things are quite honestly practically useless. And the fear that these things are going to be everywhere and the trolls are going to get their hands on them is even more invalidated because you can't get your hands on them. So if nobody except really good players can get their hands on them, really good players are going to realize these things are really bad no one's going to use it. It's not going to become a problem. And I think that's those factors, the, the lack of usability and the really low prevalence are going to combine and make it so it's not a serious problem anytime in the near future, unless these things honestly get buffed, which is manic because I don't think they need to be buffed. But my point I'm making is I don't see any situation where these can be something that are feared. And I, I want to finish this video off with the math on how these things work. Spent a good part of four hours working on deriving an equation that define how radiation grenades work as a generalization. So that way we can really understand exactly how these things work. So before continuing, I'd like to note that these equations are generalization equations. Code does not work like a math equation. Code is code. But math equations can be generalized to explain patterns in codes. And that's quite literally what I'm doing. So to start off with, we have the equation for exposure. The equation for exposure can be found equal to y equals the quantity of negative 0.225 meters plus 0.5, where m is meters and y is exposure. We can find this equation through a large amount of testing, um, really going back to those numbers I talked about earlier, where you, I did the two tests at the two different meters. If you do a lot of testing like I have done, you will find the linear correlation between the two, and that is the equation you get. This equation can then be used to find damage in a single second by using the information that Alex gave us in the last dev stream. The damage of a max exposure from a rad grenade is 4.2. So we get y equals 4.2 times that exposure um, equation. But this is all in one second. To find all the seconds, we have to actually go to calculus. 
and we can use something called a Riemann sum. And we can find what the sum of all consecutive seconds would be. And that gets us this equation. Y equals the sum when n equals b till n equals a of n times 4.2 times the exposure coin, where m is meters, y is damage in a single second, b is going to be your initial second, and a is the final second. We can simplify this out a little bit to make it a little bit more visually appealing, and we get negative 0 0.0945 meters plus 2.1 as the center term. From there, we can use the rules of the Riemann sums to make this look even more friendly and a little bit more understandable. Um, and we get b times the quantity of delta n plus 1 plus delta n times the quantity of negative, you know, the expo that quantity we just found uh, as the inner term. b being the initial second, a is no longer on here, and delta n being the total elapsed seconds. One more thing we can do, because the initial second in these equations are always going to be 1, nobody is really sitting down going, how much damage am I taking from second 8 to second 9? Yeah, nobody's doing that. Maybe I do, but that's not the point. Second one is really going to be our start point. We can simplify this equation down to 2 delta n plus 1 times the inner quantity. So that finds us the damage per second while inside the radiation. But what about when you exit the circle? Well, I found and did the math for that as well. Start off, we know that max exposure takes 25 seconds to decrease, meaning that the exposure has a decrease rating of 4% per second. That is without iodine. With iodine, it is quite literally instantaneous. We can use that relation to establish the following function xi minus 0.04s equals xf, where xi is the initial exposure, s is seconds, and xf is final exposure. From this equation, we can take find the amount of damage taken from rads wearing off as a function. Once again, using a Riemann sum, we get the sum of n equals b to n equals a time is uh, 4.2 times x initial minus 0.4n, where n is going to be seconds. This function cannot really be simplified in any major way from my knowledge at least. However, we can define the value of a. Um, a is going to be the entire amount of time it takes for the rads to decrease. Since we know the amount of rads that are decreased per second, we can define a as a is equal to initial rads divided by 0 0.04. And if we substitute that in for our general radiation equation, we can get the following equation. Now, we should also consider fusing these two equations, as nobody with any normal mind um, is going to be trying to find the damage specifically from rads or specifically from the wear off. So to do that, we have to give ui a value. And this value is the total exposure caused by the first equation. Um, it is defined in seconds of exposure and in distance from center, with second s being seconds and x being distance from center in meters. Using this, we can finally graph something. This is the graph of how much total damage it would take at different m distances from the center if you were exposed for one second, and that's that purple line. The blue line is how long you would have residual radiation if you were exposed to the rads in the dead center, um, the epicenter. So let's say you get hit by that rad nade. A reminder here though, the max range is 20. I know that this graph goes off of 20. It won't work past 20 because the grenade is capped at 20. We can substitute now this new equation into our general equation to make an equation that we can finally fuse um, and, and put them on like terms, both our radiation wear off and our radiation damage. And that results in that Goliath, and it's beautiful. But with X representing meters and S representing seconds, we can actually graph this thing. Um, graphing it for one second, we get the following graph. So with this math, we can now calculate how strong these things are. So as you can see, at one second of exposure, these things are laughably weak. Meaning if you react immediately after the nade is thrown, you will very likely take little damage, like almost negligible amounts of damage, especially if you use iodine, but I'll get back to that in a second. Um, moving forward to two seconds, these things do get strong quite quickly. So you really should not be sitting in them. But let's say you stay in two seconds, two centers uh, in the center of the epicenter is going to be just shy of 60% of your HP. So a lot. However, being above 10 meters, if you get out of the 10 meter range, they're going to stay quite weak. Um, as long as you, in the first second, are just able to get to 10 meters, you're going to be fine. They're not going to be enough damage to really be a problem. At three seconds, the situation hasn't changed drastically. If you're sub 10 meters, it's going to get worse and worse for you. But past 10 meters, as long as you're 10 meters away from epicenter, you, it's really not a problem. At four meters, the, I mean, at four seconds, the distance is going to change to 15 meters is really where you're going to want to be. 10 meters is going to become less and less safe um, as you take more and more damage. 
The past four seconds, you really just should only be on the edges of the zone. I don't know why you would sit in this zone for over four seconds. I don't even know why you do it for over three. Because um, really, think about it this way. These things should be considered Molotov cocktails. The throne, you're not going to sit in it. You need to get out of it. If you go into it, you die. But getting out of it, like if you're quick, you'll be fine. So that would be my summary of, of how strong these things are. One of my iodine statements real quick. As you saw in all those graphs, there was a red and a purple line. Purple line is the residual damage, and it makes up the vast majority of damage from these things. If you have iodine and you pop it as soon as you exit, you will quite literally take almost no damage. Um, like, you will take some, you'll take a chunk, but very little. Um, and that is really where the majority of the damage comes from, is really that residual. Um, to finalize out this video, I believe that the usability, the rarity, and the math all staunchly disagree with Half Metal Fox's predictions that the rad nades are going to be a problem. And I think they showed why the devs did the right thing in not preemptively nerfing them like he suggested. While it does seem like the devs ignored community feedback, the community didn't have the information to be making the feedback they provided. And as I'm showing you guys this proper information, this proper information doesn't seem to support his argument. They don't seem like something that has any usability, rarity, or frequency. It's just not going to seem like it's actually going to be a problem. That's all I've got for you guys today. Who knows, maybe hell will freeze over and I'll be proven wrong, but I at least hope that these arguments make sense and help bring more of an understanding to Vigor's news. But until next time, this has been Christopher Peace.